We, look, I, I know we're coming into your little area and we call it a ghetto and we have kept you here. But we are going business to business. We, what we have here is a list of names. It's just a list of names. Now, they all do happen to be Juden. However, we are going to go around and if you have seen anyone who should be on this list of names, please add a name for us. Now, you, don't, you could put any name that you want, but you have noticed that most of these end in Goldberg or Stein. You put whatever name, it's just a list of names. It is, there's nothing that could, uh, could be dangerous about this. There's nothing to be worried about. It's just a list of names. <laughs> Boogie 2988, more like Boogie 1488. Uh, Boogie 2988 was a guy, is a guy on the internet, very much a guy on the internet. My first exposure to him was, I feel like 10 years ago now, at the onset, the onset of Gamergate. Once upon a time, he was on a panel with Anita Sarkeesian and... Sargon of Akkad showed up and just like sat there menacingly and Anita Sarkeesian like yelled at him and then like at Sargon and that was like a whole thing that was the first and last time Sargon of Akkad was ever on the Joe Rogan podcast it was like two weeks after that I remember because I remember like oh I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen and then Joe Rogan just told Sargon he's a fucking douchebag the entire time like I don't want to I don't want to hear about that he's like no, but what you gotta understand, Joe, is um this girl and you so cozy, and Joe's just like I don't I don't fucking care. I don't care at all. <laughs> I don't I don't give a shit whatsoever about this. And like it was the beginning of the end for for those kind of guests, I guess. That was old old, old back in the day. Um but Boogie two nine eight eight was on like I think even Philip DeFranco at that point because he interrupted Anita Sarkeesian or like didn't I don't know what something happened between him and her and she yelled at him backstage was the whole deal and people were saying like I don't know who could just yell at boogie 2988 he's like the Mr. Rogers or some shit of the internet and the second I heard that I was like I bet this guy's a fucking villain at heart I bet he's a villain because like anyone who's like tries to be a Mr. Rogers type person, I feel like is like always going to be a fucking skis. Cause Mr. Rogers didn't try to be Mr. Rogers. He just was, you know what I mean? And if you're trying to be perceived as an extra nice, as an extra approachable guy, you know, and like you want that, that kind of reputation to follow you ahead. I, I always, i always find that to be an extremely like sus way to exist maybe you are a nice guy but you have to go all the way to the grave never fucking up once for me to actually give it to you so don't don't run into me or tell me about somebody like he's just the he's the mr rogers of this thing don't don't tell me about that guy and then expect me to go like oh okay yeah sure because <laughs> tell you how it's gonna fucking work out sargon depends on the child of a god i mean boy in retrospect sargon did a lot of coping after that panel like, sargon did nothing but cope the entire time I still can't remember what the good Sargon of a Cod video was. But in any case, that, that's, that's how I was introduced to Boogie. And then he sort of vanished. And every time he, like, reappeared, I was just more and more like, yeah, I was right. I was right. I was correct. Is he getting a divorce, though, for some reason? Like, Mr. Rogers doesn't get a fucking divorce. And then all of a sudden, he kind of, like, vanishes. And then every time he shows up, it's like more and more and more drama and then like every time you hear about boogie 298 it 2988 is because like h3h3 brought it up and like all right well there you go that's not good <laughs> if i haven't heard of a youtuber's name in three four years especially and the first person that the first voice i hear that men that name mentioned again is ethan fucking klein that's not good for you you're you're in you're in trouble i don't know what it doesn't even matter. If it's good news, you're in trouble. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> uh, but he came back, and a couple months ago, we found out that Boogie had, congratulations to him, completed his full transition into a 24-7 internet lol cow. That's how he is. That's who he is. That's how he do. That's his life. For real, for real. He's real cringe. He's a real depressing dude. Big guy. Uh, real overweight, real gross, just a 500 pound life type person, you know, not, not like, uh, you feel bad for him. It's like, he's 
quite clearly leaning into being a, a grease ball. Yuck. And recently he has started to um, tickle the taint, so to say, of basically like the Keemstar orbiter sphere, which is like not really like political political, but just generally whatever a 13 year old boy in this specific era would find interesting not like the 13 year old boy from three years ago or from you know 10 years ago whatever like is on the minds of just the most hormone addled brain dead uh fucking teenager at the time like that is what fucking keemstar is going to be covering and what keemstar is going to be talking about and right now it's the lack of fucking coom ability in games which is being rephrased as like white men are under attack in video games which is possibly the most insanely untrue thing i've ever heard boogie has been getting more and more into those kind of spheres and recently he tweeted uh this video games are supposed to be fun not lectures about why being a white man is bad <laughs> everyone that, that posts below this we, you could go through it fucking forever you could you could go down everyone just says what games what games over and over and over again. Apparently he's got a video. I didn't see this earlier when I scheduled the stream, so I'll click on Well gamers, grab your His background kind of looks like it. This is like Shadowversity's Ghost of Future Past, I swear to God. The original Gamergate was lame. It was, it was just the worst thing on the internet. It was bad content from dipshits. Uh, people who I didn't care to hear their opinions on fucking anything. Really? Just constantly changing the conversations about like all stuff that I was interested from like ways that could make it better into ways that would make it like more politically like kosher for them, which is the stupidest shit in the fucking world. Like I, I it, this, the complaints are asinine and generally when they have one, they have to like go and dig down into the most unplayable non large, like this game is the game that is destroying white men. It's like, I have never fucking heard of that. I actively get on Steam and look for like rare games and you found you somehow found managed to find one. It has uh five hundred and fifty one reviews, all from like your little review crew that are negative in the first place. So who the fuck is even playing it? Um and, and it has like less sales than it has reviews. So how is this destroying mankind? You know what I mean? A lot of it boils down to I can't actively bust one out. I cannot constantly twenty four seven coom to every single chick that's in a video game. Um, I think we might be getting into a little bit of that. No, that's that we're saving that. That's Shadowversity. That's probably tomorrow because we got to get on it. Um, oh man, my fucking eyeballs are dry as shit. I might have to put on glasses. I don't want to. The, the issue with this shit is, um, first and foremost, there are a lot of problems with video games. And video games have been getting kind of generally shittier, specifically in the AAA context. For a little over a decade, maybe a flat decade now, right? Um, the biggest issue is because EA, which is basically one of the largest studios out there, ate everything. <laughs> they, they ate like fucking everything. And like the same with like Blizzard, Bethesda, whatever. I can't keep track of the fucking triangles. But basically, there has been a standard push or a standard... Um, yeah, push of a, a few small or a few uh, small companies, not like at the small time, a few a small collection of people. There we go at the very top of these massive companies to just absorb all of the other companies and stuff. You know, back when I was a kid, Activision, Blizzard, Bethesda, Capcom, SquareSoft, Enix. These are all different companies. Konami, you know, you keep going and they did their own different thing and they were in com competition with each other. Now, because of the standard fucking march of capitalism, the companies get, they absorb all of the smaller ones because it's like fiscally responsible or whatever for the people to sell the company when they have one single bad year instead of trying to stick with it and make better games. And then they sort of just boil down the way that they make games into an extremely simplistic, brain dead, Skinner box style of production, uh, just a yearly installment that will exploit the player base for the maximum amount of money to maximize profits, which is how capitalism works. If you're pro capitalism in its rawest form, you love this. Everybody who is anti, uh, anti any form of socialism 
any form of collective bargaining. This is the world that you, you want. Every AI person, you desire this. This is, this is how you want art to progress. And it creates a situation where the games themselves are no longer compelling. They're not compelling. They're not interesting. And it's not even in just a way where it's like, hey, man, um, you know, I, I want a whole lot of extra plot with my, my, metal, my Modern Warfare 3 this year. It's more along the lines of campaigns barely exist. The games don't really exist as single player games, but they cost like single player game levels of money and are like multiple hundreds of megabytes in size for something that you'll play for like maybe 20 minutes a few times unless you're die hard. And then it vanishes. Like generally, I don't know anybody that plays the vast majority of Call of Duty games past December, really. They come out in November. You kind of bang with them uh, with your friends throughout the entirety of Christmas break. And then they're gone. And the thing is, is that's kind of an okay cycle for things like sports and stuff. It began with sports games, but sports games, they get new rosters and you kind of have to do that to get the licensing and shit. It's a whole different ball game. No pun intended. But in this case, uh, they've started spreading this out to everything. So like all of the major releases in the last few years with notable, few notable exceptions have just been boogers or like non-existent. You know what I'm saying? Um it, Studios like Elden Ring, once like that make Elden like FromSoft, would not once upon a time be putting out the biggest fucking game of the year, but now they are routinely. Um, th these are like kind of like almost like indie-ish, you know, double A studios. In my mind, it might not actually necessarily be the case, but all the biggest players they keep buying up all these properties and they destroy the properties. They put out dog shit, Starfield notably. Um, or just 700 different reissues of the same old product. Where How many fucking Skyrim releases are we up to by now? I think it's five since the game came out in 2011. Battlefield got worse. Call of Duty is basically unplayable at this point. It, it's just somehow a worse version that has worse netcode and guns and animations than the, than the installments that came out a few years back. There's no more Tony Hawks, really, that I know. And, you know, maybe Skate 5 is 4 is coming out, 3, whatever the fuck, eventually, and people like that. But, like, a lot of the kind of games that you would look forward to just don't exist. And there's not a lot of novelization. There's not a lot of interesting new things being brought to the forefront for these media. And that really leaves a sour taste in most people's mouths. But what Gamergate tries to do, and what guys like, we're going to hear fucking Boogie's fat ass talk about this stupid shit... What they're trying to try to do is offset the blame from the people literally making the creative decisions in the game, the people at the very top, the people who are hiring everybody, the people who are being counting, the people who are like, you know, their names are the most important names on the masthead because they have all of the hiring and firing authority. Instead, we're going to put it off onto this sweet baby ink again, probably. And, uh, you know, just any black person or woman that came within fucking sniff distance of any game that failed specifically. Aren't we in double-digit Skyrim releases yet? I don't know. We're probably going to get there. Let's see. What are you doing? And applying on their website is knowing I did two interviews for their studios and they're like five hours long. I think Shad and other con grifters are reacting to a clip of a dev lady saying she hired only POCs for her indie game. I possibly looked into it for like three minutes and the clip was two years old. <laughs> I'm not going to be surprised if that's what we get in. What your Mountain Dew? Hogwarts Legacy was the best-selling game, but BG3 won, which it should be. Like, Hogwarts Legacy should be the biggest-selling game for almost any... It's, it's, by the way, first and foremost, a game that feels uh, delayed by, like, 10 years. <laughs> it should have came out 10 years ago and actually, like, exp exploring Hogwarts game that doesn't suck. I don't care about the transgender, uh, transphobia aspect of it. It is just a massive 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 property it's fucking harry potter you know what i'm saying um it was always going to be the biggest selling thing of any year because that's a game that a lot of people have been like thinking about playing or like w wishing would exist since their childhood i heard it's not particularly great um i've seen it played there's no point where i was watching like clips of it and, like man i need to experience that that's the vibe I need fucking right now. It just kind of seems pretty, pretty mid. I, I think I said this a few streams ago, but it seems kind of up the, the alley of like, uh, the star Wars fallen, whatever the fuck the, the one with the kid from fucking shameless, 
um cal cal kuchetska <laughs> cal cal castus yeah i'm gonna hop into this we're gonna see we're gonna see what fucking uh boogie has to say are you what do you think this room smells like i bet this room smells fucking rough bro i bet it's sharp i bet it's got like a parmesan zing to it you know what i mean lock and load your controllers gamergate 2 has officially begun and who's leading the clap back this time is it uh just some random neck beard on the internet like me? No, it's Elon freaking Musk. And you might be asking, who is Elon squaring off against? Is it some Anita Sarkeesian type? No, it's Homeland Security. I'm gonna break this video down into two parts. The first of which is to get people caught up to speed as to exactly what's happening and why it's happening. And secondly, as an old head who lived through the first Gamergate and in fact made quite a few mistakes during the first Gamergate, I, uh, I, I wanna talk about my opinion on what's probably going to happen here and what we should be doing. Now, all of this starts with a company that you probably never heard of known as Sweet Baby Incorporated which in their own words is a narrative development and consultation. So before you even get into this, I'm going to talk about it. I looked this Sweet Baby Inc. company up. I don't give a fuck what he has to say. This is the most nothing burger, by the way. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Um, they worked on fucking, they've been consulted on games that are the best games of the year. They were consulted on like God of War. So like any argument that they're like ruining games is pretty much over at that point. Because God of War fucking Ragnarok. I still want to play that. I haven't played that yet. I played God of War Omega, I guess I'll call it the fucking reboot. One of the best open world games I've I've played in recent memory. It was fucking awesome. It was the reason that this fucking stream started in August instead of probably like July or June because I was only doing that. That game was great. There was a bunch of other really good games and there was a bunch of games I've never fucking heard of. So this sweet baby company, basically you ask them, their consultants. Consultants exist everywhere. Um, and what these guys are consulted on is just like, hey man, um, is this story like racist or anything? And not in the like, hey, we have to like, you know, we have to watch out for the microaggressions and shit. It's just sometimes you have things that like can be fiscally, like they can be fucking like a little hanging point. Everyone knows this. It's like, hey, this is a thing that you can do. Like we, we're just gonna do some cultural research on whatever the fuck you're putting out to make sure the day that it comes out, everyone's not like, this is worse than when Johnny Depp pretended to be a Native American person for that, that movie that failed. Same goddamn thing. Um, the room you're in looks like it smells like someone's spare bedroom, if that makes any sense. The one I'm in, it does. <laughs> it does. I had to clean the carpets in here. It's a little musty. If you guys saw the curtains, you would know. We're going to fix this up. The reason I'm not further over to the right to keep this wall out is because there's a thing to me, to the right of me. It's a gigantic box that I, I could fucking crawl up inside. That's the back end of a non-functioning fireplace that I'm going to remove. And it's going to be better. It's going to be better. I'm going to get plants and shit in here. It'll be great. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's what these people do. They don't even write the entire thing from what I understand. Uh, maybe they provide some, but it's generally just like a little bit of bullshit. It's a nothing burger. Like there, there's tons of consulting companies like this out there. Weapons consulting companies do the same sort of thing. Um, you call people up and you're like, hey, I need somebody that's in the military to tell me like, is this how somebody would fucking button their pants if they were a space marine? The guy's like, Fuck, I don't know. Yes, that'll be a thousand dollars, please. In <laughs> studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. I swear I didn't know better, that word was a slur. Slur. I don't know if you're even game. allowed to say that keyword. It's quad, and then um, like a quad runner, but instead of runner, say un, but don't do it out loud. I don't know if that is. I didn't. Even, that, that's a word I haven't even thought of. That sounds like such old timey racism. It wasn't until I saw that that girl, <laughs> three quarter massa, one quarter. <laughs> Barack Obama was a mulatto. <laughs> Shit, fucking insanity, dude. Oh my god. Johnny Depp really put a dead bird on his head and called it a day. He didn't give a fuck, man. That man, he was on so much fucking heroin. He probably doesn't even remember that goddamn Games thing industry. being made. They aim to make more games, more engaging, more fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive for everyone. Spoiler alert, they mostly fail to do so. Now, right here on their website, you'll see a list of games that they have worked on. So, like, from what I understand, this, Alan Wake 2, is one of the best games ever. Spider-Man 2, everyone is, it's a huge seller. Everyone loves it. God of War 2 is, no, uh, TikTok was nothing. Nothing but fucking God of War clips when it came out. And everyone loves the plot, and everyone loves everything about it. So these three games alone are massive successes that no one reasonably had any fucking problem with. This, these games I've never fucking heard of 
And this game I have heard of, and when I've seen, I've watched a full gameplay of it because I was just like, I'm not buying that. It's just a bad game. Just a bad game. Like, <laughs> the narrative doesn't make, who gives a fuck? There's like, a, people keep sharing things from like the cutscenes, but it is just a bad game. It's, it's like a shooter, but like, uh, an arena, it's an arena shooter. It, it kind of looks like fucking, um, like a really bad Borderlands 2 really bad borderlands 2 is is basically what it is and this is important later you don't so need to pick up anything you'll see that some of these games have been too big to fail god of war ragnarok you know sequel to what do you mean too big to fail boogie look at i mean well, you know what i guess he hasn't failed yet necessarily original god of war alan wake 2 sequel to the original alan wake spider-man 2 too big to, okay oh you're just gonna that's too big to fail alan wake failed dumb fuck <laughs> alan wake was a failure of a game only i liked it or remembered it when it came out that's a game I had to fight. I was so stoked to find out that Remedy was, I think it was Remedy, was making a second Alan Wake because the first one was great and no one fucking played it or knew anything about it. And it got panned by people because of the fucking flashlight mechanics. Don't know anything about this, this, or this. They failed. And some other games on here are some real stinkers, like uh, Suicide Squad, where they worked on the script writing, the banter, the cutscenes, and other things. And other things that made Suicide Squad utterly fail. Meanwhile, over here on Steam... No, that's not it. Liar. Lying. Fat fucking lying piece of shit, Boogie2988. You motherfucking... You, you greaseball. You fucking scumbag. Fucking liar. He's a fucking... Look, hold on. I, I just gotta show you. Let me show you what the fucking gameplay for this piece of shit looks like. Uh, Alright, just look at this. This is it. This is this game. Farting around. Doing nothing. Like, just just getting getting to places. Let's see if we skip skip ahead. Look how much fucking down is flying. I don't think it has any like backup missions. This isn't actually Batman. That's just fucking dead shot. Floating around, floating around, floating around. Now you get to fight. And this is what the fighting is. It's just this arena shooter shit. Over and over and over again. I watched these boss fights because I wanted to see what they looked like. They are the longest. They last like 25 minutes. They're like 20, 25 minute long boss fights. They're fucking insane. Let's see. He'll do it. Look, this is it. This is this whole thing. This is his boss fight meter up here. Look, you should keep going. This is how long. This is just the fucking Green Lantern boss fight. Look at this shit. I don't even know if he's going to fucking lose. It just keeps fucking going. And then there's like, yeah, Jesus Christ, it's still just going. God damn. And then you finally get to the end of it, whatever. And then they have just shit lo long ass fucking cutscenes. Long as fuck cutscenes. Look at these things. They're massive. Then you get a eh, boss rush, whatever the fuck this is. I guess you can run around and start some things up. But it's just, there's just nothing interesting about the play cycle of this fucking game. Here we go. This is. Dude, most of this I've seen has been this fuck running around. Slow, floaty, bouncy. Like. This is it. This is basically what everything I've seen looks like. This kind of like hyper colorful kind of stuff. I guess he's dead. You know, I'm not saying that's like it's a hundred percent like a absolute big fit, but who wants to fucking play that? <laughs> the Suicide Squad is not. No one, no mainstream people know or like it. No one, they don't give a fuck. The only people that like Suicide Squad are fucking DC fucking fanboys. Do you know what I mean? That like appreciate specific runs of the Suicide Squad, or like maybe saw like one of the good Suicide Squad cartoons, whatever normies the normie attempt the attempt to indoctrinate normies into liking fucking suicide squad failed utterly it was a massive failure it had jared leto as the joker leto whatever the fuck how you um margot robbie was uh, pretty good as harley quinn and they kind of like they cashed their chips on that and that was pretty much the end of it they had will smith in that movie in the most we don't need will smith in this movie role of all time and it was it was super mid 
Um, if not, no, actually, the original Suicide Squad was just bad. It was just probably one of the worst superhero movies that had existed yet, but then, like, Morbius came out, and so now they're just dumping dog shit fucking uh, movies. It, it, it set the standard because it was the worst at the time DC movie, which is psychotic. The second Suicide, Suicide Squad movie was better, much smaller. The best property in modern DC is 100% the Suicide Squad show starring John Cena. American Brown. <laughs> fucking great. Um, yeah, it, it's just a cash... It, it's basically... It's not even like an asset. It's like an IP flip. I don't even know how to describe it. It just, it, it just never was going to be good. It was never going to be good as a game. Um, and that's the problem, is that these dipshits, fuckboys like goddamn Boogie2988 and fucking Asmongold, uh, they, they, people who literally probably sniff their own fucking ball sweat to just wake up in the morning, just fucking getting a, fuck, like a full lick of that fucking salt right in their goddamn eyes. They are trying to convince you that it's like chicks <laughs> and the sweet baby, sweet baby ink. Sweet baby ink didn't do shit for the gameplay cycle, which is everything, everything. No one gives a fuck about the goddamn plot if the gameplay cycle smacks. You know what I'm saying? Like Helldivers 2 is, it goes hard as shit. It's one of the best fucking games that's out right now. I love it. I fuck, I would play that game instead of talking to you guys in a fucking heartbeat if I could do it. It is great. It is great. Very good. This game just doesn't have a, like an interesting looking gameplay cycle. A gameplay cycle is basically like, what you get in the game to get to your reward complex, right? That you do over and over again. Or like Batman Arkham Sight, Arkham City, Batman Arkham Knight, whichever one, you know, Arkham Asylum. Those ones, it's about going into a room. The gameplay cycle in that, if you want me to boil these down, is you go into a new area. It's set up. It has X amount of bad guys. It has X amount of like little environmental features, these kind of issues. And then the gameplay cycle is you go into that room. You figure out how to solve the puzzle of the stealth elements and the fights, that, however you want to do it, and then you go and you execute your little plan. And then when everybody's knocked out, that's the end of the gameplay cycle. It's usually when the plot element pushes you to the next room or when you find an upgrade, this, that, that, and the other. That is a gameplay cycle. For this game, it seems like you have to travel 5 million goddamn miles to get to the next one. And then it's just fucking hold R. It looks like you hold R, strafe with your left fucking thumb you've played this game before it's not fun miserable do you know what i'm saying so like if the gameplay cycle is not there who gives a shit i can barely remember what happened in fucking batman arkham asylum but like i remember the vibe of playing both of those games my favorite one was arkham city i think was that the second one you're the one where your your, your cloak starts disintegrating and all of the all of the bad guys have their own little areas of the city and you're like, fuck, I can't wait till I get to like the Bane area or the, the, the I think it was actually the Mr. Frost area because it's like, like, oh, cool. He definitely controls that side of town. Like you're, you're going for like the lighthouses basically that leads you to the next parts of the game. That shit's great. This is just running around. <laughs> it looks like a demo, unironically. Bro, people like Skyrim for the exploration. The overwhelming majority of Skyrim storylines are mid as hell. I can't fucking remember any of Skyrim storylines other than like the Stormcloaks were racist or something. I, I just can't even remember like that. Anything else about it? These dumbasses love to say it's, uh, sweet baby ain't ruin this or that, but they have no proof on what SBI actually worked on to make it fail. They just want to scapegoat this time. Well, you can tell what they, they literally just telling you what they did. Sweet baby ink is that they provided consultation for certain narrative aspects of it, which is going to play best You'll see on these this. curation pages where people oh, can curate lists of games based on all kinds of different things, whether or not they recommend them or don't recommend them, the type of game they are, the type of DRM they use. And this about? user decided to create a list of games based on... Oh, yeah, this is the, uh, this is the person. This is the fucking... This is the mob. This is a hate mob. This is why a bunch of these games are getting fucking smashed. This guy basically just put together a fucking hate list so that you can go in and pre-dunk on unreleased games. <laughs> Games that Sweet Baby Incorporated had worked on. That way, you know, if you've had a good experience with this company in the past, you could play that game based on that recommendation. If you've had a bad experience in the past, but look you at what you, know, you haven't noticed this yet. Just here to where's where's fucking God of War and Spider Man Two? Consumer. Well, eventually, this maybe I saw Spider Man Two in the past. You can choose to avoid that. Game. All the bad this ones are on there, but like, is Spider Man Two on there? And if it is, it's not at the top. You have to go through all of these. All of these other ones, like, okay, 
games <laughs> based on games that Sweet Baby Incorporated had worked on. That way, you know, if you've had a good experience with this company in the past, you could play that game based on that recommendation. Yeah, it's not even on there. The biggest games, Spider-Man 2 and fucking God of War aren't on here. So was Sweet Baby Inc. detected? Look, like, fucking rat. You fucking fat rat piece of shit, Boogie. You piece of fucking shit. You lying motherfucker. I mean, if you've had you a bad experience in the past, you choose to bro. avoid that game. Sweet Baby Inc. involved. Proof on Crows and Cledits. He's got the fucking HV. Dude, this is just fucking... This is what happens when you, you break Kiwi Farms. You lose your containment board. This is just here dedicated to harassment. It is harassment group. It is, it is absolutely a harassment group. It is absolutely a harassment group. <laughs> it, it is just a fucking harassment group. Why the fuck else is it? And that it obviously doesn't adhere to Steam's policies and code of conduct. And it doesn't encourage people to report, report the hell out of the group in the hopes that it would get taken down. And while you're at it, why don't you report this guy, the guy who created this consumer advocacy list, uh, report his account that he spent all his time. Base, get him, fuck him. <laughs> and all this money on. Oh shit, fuck it. My, my oh, no, now your account's detected. Oh shit, I, I told everyone what you're doing and now I'm the bad guy. But when you were telling everybody what other people were doing, like, it's the same thing. But why is that? Why, you know, don't, don't, oh, yeah. Boogie's not reading what he's doing in a, in, a, in a pissy little voice, isn't it? To see if you can get that taken away from him as well. And again, because he was con informing consumers. Now, you remember is he over under we on the guy who started the Sweet Baby and Kate trade? I pointed out that they list the games I wouldn't be surprised they worked on right on their way. Look at all these. Uh, Alan Wake too. That's the other one. None of those were on there. None of those were on there. But all these other ones were. Website. So if they're doing that themselves, are they harassing themselves? How could it possibly be harassing? Also, how about fucking Sweet Baby Inc. detected? And he looked through, like, I looked through the uh, credits. You could just go to their fucking site. You can go to their website and look at the fucking, look at the fucking credits that they have. Because they're, they're a company that wants to tell you what fucking game they were working on. Dude, it's just spot the Jew all over again. Can you find the Jew? <laughs> That's all it is. It's the same fucking dumb... God damn, can you, can you find him? There's something different about this. Can you spot the Jew? That's the fucking entirety of this shit. Down to the e excluding examples of things that were good. Fucking Copy -paste awesome. This list of games that they've posted themselves over on Steam. That, it's nonsensical. And it's definitely not worth somebody losing their Steam account over. Now, obviously, gamers didn't like that. Uh, but you know who else didn't? Twitter. Uh, Twitter fed Chris a six-day ban for targeted harassment. The thing that Chris was actually doing, the thing that, you know, she was accusing others of doing and decided to do herself. Meanwhile, we have Lego Butts, who I presume you remember from the first Gamergate, if you were around for it, pointing out... Dude, it's like fucking, like, dude, you know, the person that's on your website that's on your side is the same website that, like, fucking Stone Toss got doxxed. Stone Toss... Stone Toss's name, Hans Christian Grabner, by the way, gets fucking uh, released on Twitter, Instaban, but then, um, you know, fucking Chaya, Chaya Raicha can whatever the fuck, she can say whatever, she can just like dox literal children. <laughs> Nothing fucking happened. Graham Lineman, I saw that, he's just fucking posting like op photos of like literal teenage children that are naked. It's just like basically like fucking illicit pictures of children on uh, Twitter. That's fine. No, no ban. Because it's, it's, it's fucking uneven application of the law. That Steam doesn't, you because know, it's force fucking owned by some dipshit that, that agrees with has fucking, been worked on by uh, Sweet Baby Incorporated, Boogie. and that might be why it should get taken down. This got community noted by the fact that, number one, Lego Boogie, Butts works for... What does that mean? That's a lot of money for a person of color is the same one that cries yearly about his haters and their hate campaigns. What a doofus. He's, he's, he, he fucking stands for nothing. He's the, he's the evolved version of all the rest of these fucking scumbags. Well, he should be spending more time with his barely legal girlfriend than feeding this campaign. Well, he's got to fuck. He's got to eat somehow. Sweet baby incorporated and probably shouldn't be trusted on this particular topic. And then secondly, the curator literally uses that games list that they have on their website that I showed you early to, you know, prove that these are the games they've worked on. But he doesn't use all of them. You dumb fucking idiot. He doesn't put all of them on there. He doesn't put the good games. He only puts the ones you don't know and the one that you don't like because it's the Suicide Squad game because no one but two AAA titles. God of War. God of War Ragnarok, one of the biggest games of that year. And uh, Spider-Man 2, like one of the biggest games of that year. Probably the biggest game on that platform that year. So I think that's a, P a PS5 exclusive. We're just going to leave those off the list. Not going to lead with that. Because it would fuck up people's opinion of it. Because it would give you a more balanced understanding of what these people do. All you see is, I've never heard of this game. And this one game is bad. Look at me. I'm the smartest little fucking potato in the potato factory. Make french fries out of me so Boogie can fucking gobble me down. Tyler, yeah, we were literally dealing with people who want to turn the entire outrage of the internet towards people they don't like. It's the same shit that causes swatting. 100%. They're, they're fucking... <laughs> Vote.
gave me five dollars and twenty one cents from vote. Thanks, bud. Did you forget to write something? Wait, shit, bro. I forgot to type to my comment. All right, everybody, hold on. Give us a second. Bo? I was going to say the God of War Ragnarok and Spider Man 2 aren't on Steam yet. Are they? Are, there, are they? Do, 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 do. It's Alan Wake 2, is though, isn't it? Also, can't you can't you rate games that are on Steam? In either way, like, yeah, hold on. But also, even then, like, still, same thing. I, actually, the point still stands. Then, like, you're still not representing everything. You know what I mean? He's not including them in his conversation. So, fuck Boogie in general. But also, like, it's not like you're giving them a fucking fair shake anyway. Or what about the other games? Like, are they good or not? It's just like, still, no, hold on, still. My, my point stands. I don't give a fuck. You are still leaving out the fact that there are good games from them because you're not talking about, like, what they do. You're just saying, like, these, fu- this company has worked on these games, which is still fucking, first and foremost, a harassment thing. But also, like, not including, like, hey, they have more games to look at and you could find out an entire list of their games and look up that shit yourself. Same deal. It's really just trying to lead with the fucking Suicide Squad thing. Oh, man. But disappointing. Disapp- I'm actually, I'm mostly upset because I want to play fucking Alan Wake 2, but it's apparently on fucking Epic Game Store, which I de-downloaded. What the fuck is even on there? Half the games aren't even released yet. Also true. I saw a bunch well, of them still coming out like, after the here. fact of this. Why are these guys afraid of people listing the games they've worked on to begin with? If you've done good work and you're proud of the work you've done. Well, the thing is, is they do list it done someone listing all the games you've worked on should be doing you a favor right unless of course you know the work you're putting in is bad and it's ruined some of the games that could have been better no because it's a fucking it's a harassment campaign boogie you fucking fat idiot they already do list all they did why are you saying that they already do list all the games they worked on it's on their website you just looked at it you fucking moron that list is not comprehensive point stands it's like you're literally trying to single out games that this fucking one company has worked on (laughs) in order to accomplish what to to say that they're a part of it and then therefore that game is fucking befouled like that that's the entire point of it it's a harassment campaign because you're not including like hey there's a list of ca- there's a list of games that also includes these things that are on epic game store or are fucking ps exclusives that are massively well like fucking massively good selling games and shit you're not including that you're not including the entire picture some of them are unreleased and so you're bombing indie creators because you're fucking butthurt about chicks then you probably don't want people curating that list. I In think you know what they're doing. Now, due to the rise in effect, all of this caused that curator list to bloom over 100K. Now, 250K people on that list supporting this cause. And as people dug around, they they found this, the co-founder of Sweet Baby Incorporated, basically saying that they bully people into putting this type of stuff in their games. Here, I'll let her speak for herself. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher-ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, Go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. I don't think it's ever a good look to say that you're. That is how you make a sale. (laughs) Boogie, if you're going to get mad at that, you better be upset at all the fucking ADT wireless people that nonstop call you when you buy a new house. Did you know that there's murderers in your neighborhood? ADT wireless, eh? We're from, uh, uh, what's the other one? Vincent or Vint V something. I can't remember. Vivint. Hey, we're from Vivint. Did you know that uh, every five minutes in America, homes broken into could be a violent breaking. Hey, we're from Vivint. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fucking trash. Company is based on wielding cancel culture to get big companies to pay you. But if at least you're providing a valuable service, I guess that might be at least conceivable. But if you wonder what kind of service Sweet Baby Incorporated is, is trying to provide, well, look at these tweets from Felix that we spoke about earlier. <coughs> Came to shoot down your white male lead game ideas. I had a nightmare that I was a white male gamer. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty abundantly clear that they're damn, bro. Damn, look at all that. Look at look at this fucking tweet from 2014 with 19 likes. God damn. Oh shit, December 2019, one like. The fuck is this? What what the fuck is the point? What is this? <laughs> There's three bookmarks on this tweet, and it's the guy that made the fucking screenshot. They're not, uh, they're not there to add diversity to games. They're there to push white people and white males out. Then you got the old... That's, that's adding diversity. If there's 10 spots and 10 of them have white guys in them and you push two guys white out, two white guys out and you put two non-white people in there, that's, that's diversity, all right? If there's X amount, that's... Yeah. It's demographic replacement. I don't have full control of the board anymore. 
Huge clip chimping. I mean, what old what, media stepping in. Uh, this is game developer, a writer by the name of Brian Francis, who says Steam and Discord are being used as a home base for hateful reactionaries to single out and harass game developers. Why are Valve and Discord permitting harassment against Sweet Baby Incorporated? And again, the harassment Bryant is so upset about is that someone copy and pasted from the Sweet Baby Incorporated website. Look, I can only take so much fun. I can only take so much. Uh, I, I can only take a guy. You, you're talking to me. But your arm looks like a bent straw, and that bothers the fuck out of me. That that's like that's triggering triggering something in the back of my head that's like completely knocking me off my fucking cart. As I can't take the list of games they've worked on, so that you can make how the fuck does your break your fucking artery still pump blood? I mean, I guess in Brian's article he does point out that at one point there was a forum on that curation group where a lot of people, a handful of bad actors, said some crazy shit. But the curator just got rid of those forums, so there's nothing that could possibly be harassment on that page, right? Just a list of games. But here's where things get entirely off the rails. Uh, this group, it's just li look, we, look. I I know we're coming into your little area, and we call it a ghetto, and we have kept you here, but we are going business to business. We, what we have here is a list of names. It's just a list of names. Now, they all do happen to be Juden. However, we are going to go around, and if you have seen anyone who should be on this list of names, please add a name for us. Now, you, don't, you could put any name that you want, but you have noticed that most of these end in Goldberg or Stein. You put whatever name. It's just a list of names. It is, there's nothing that could, uh, could be dangerous about this. There's nothing to be worried about. It's just a list of names. <laughs> Named Take This, which, after getting looked into, found out they were being funded by Homeland Security here in the United States. Posted an article called Responding to Gamergate 2, saying Gamergate 2 is the latest <laughs> up, targeting bro. harassment campaign within the games industry, and it's aimed at Sweet Baby Incorporated, and that all scholars and journalists and game developers must do everything they can to shut down Gamergate 2 and denounce the gamers who don't want to buy games that have been worked on by this company. So there's your smoking gun. The Department of Homeland Security funding an organization that just fired the warning shot that Gamergate 2 is coming, and we need to make sure that every gamer knows they have to buy the games worked on by Sweet Baby Incorporated, or else they're the bad guys! Am I taking crazy pills? You can't even blame the gamers this time. It's, it's Homeland Security. Holy shit. Now, of course, we saw the old guard from the first Gamergate dust off their pitchforks. We saw Mark Kern. You know the guy. Shit. Now, I'm taking I'm taking crazy free gamers who don't want to buy this. I can't fucking understand what this guy's saying. do everything or... they can to shut down Gamergate 2 and denounce the gamers who don't want to buy games that have been worked on by this company. What the fuck are you talking about? Hold on. I got to slow him down. This is fucking, this is like full bore. Tendies. I can't understand the tendies talk. Industry, and it's aimed at Sweet Baby Incorporated, that all scholars and... Large-scale harassment campaigns like this fuel and are fueled by political events. This political rhetoric heats up ahead of the U.S. presidential election later this year. This kind of online activity is going to ramp up, and it's important to understand these phenomena are interrelated. As scholars and journalists have noted, the targeted harassment, hate, and cultural norms that were at the heart of Gamergate in the mid-2010s never went away. People in game spaces, especially marginalized developers and other content creators, face hate and harassment daily. In fact, research conducted by the Take This has outlined an entire spectrum and typology of extremism and dark participation in games that is bigger than any one movement but underlies all of them. It can be scary or uncomfortable to think about, to talk about, and to understand. In overwhelming situations, it's not unusual to feel at loss or to have thoughts of helplessness, but there are things we can do to mitigate the harm. It's extremely important to speak out and step up for people, folks that are being harmed. This kind of support can take on many different forms. Be an email or a quick check-in. This is mostly about like taking. This is like fucking helping people that are around you who feel harassed. <laughs> Journalist and game. You may be inclined to be quiet or cautious, but that's actually not helpful. As noted in our resources, empowering the game industry. A major lesson learned from the Gamergate was the importance of taking a loud public stand. At the time, many studios were hesitant to address the hate and abuse from Gamergate in any meaningful way. The reasons varied, but usually the hesitation was born out of fear of losing profits or concern that taking a stance would attract the attention of the Gamergate mob. developers. The thing is, the Game Gate mob is basically like the same people that make full up, like, it's like the lolly people. It's the same fucking group of people, basically. There's not that many of them. It, they just have a lot of fucking free time. It's like fucking, you know, like, what, six or seven hundred total people, and then, like, that are doing anything, and then a fuckload of bot accounts, and maybe, like, uh, 10 or 15,000 disinterested children that, that are going to fucking get it, and, like, you know, unfuckable losers in their 30s, and a few... I'm upset he spaghetti IT consultants that draw comics. Must uh, do everything they can to shut that down just Gamergate 2. That article seems fine. I, 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 I fucking backed up because I was wondering if fucking Boogie was going to read, but, like, I don't think he... I would be stunned to find out that Boogie's literate past, like, a fucking eighth grade level. That would actually be pretty crazy. Like, I, I want to know the longest book that Boogie's ever read, and if I found out it's Way of the King, that doesn't count. <laughs> 
in the first Gamergate dust off their pitchforks. We saw Mark Kern, you know, the guy who worked at Blizzard there, Grums on Twitter. Here in this interview with the quartering, he went on to explain that basically the way the games are getting made is they're extremely expensive, huge companies. James Lindsay, isn't he the fu- isn't he a f- literal fucking Nazi? Hold on. Oh yeah, he's the Peter Bogosian guy. Uh, he, Peter Bogosian, and Helen Pluckrose submitted hoax articles to academic journals in 2018, 2018 to sc- test scholarship and rigor. The LGBT grooming conspiracy guy, part of the new atheism mu- movement, blah, 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 blah. critic of wokeness, which he analyzes through religious belief. Describes the social justice movement as an ideological enemy, though he opposed Donald Trump in the 2016 president election. He announced his intention to vote for Trump in the 2020 election, arguing the dangers of wokeness is much greater than that of a Trump presidency. My man is a fucking L-taking champion. He popularized Groomer. Oh, so this is, yeah, James Lindsay's the guy that pro- promoted Groomer. So he's just like a fucking, like, literal hate propagandist. <laughs> he has referred to the pride flag as the flag of a hostile enemy. He wrote on Twitter in 2021 that there will be a genocide of whites if critical race theory isn't stopped. His statement was met with widespread criticism, including from the founder of Libertarian and Anti-Identity Politics magazine, Kiet. Claire Lehman wrote, he's now promoting white genocide theory. Okay, so this guy's a fucking uh, replacement theory dude. Anti-Marxist, this dude, this guy's a sneeze away from coming out against Jews permanently. He's have to come up with the money, and one of the best... Here's the thing, I... I there's a lot of like, you know, you can say what this, that, that, and the other. I, I just like, I know my thing is like, if they're not like a Nazi Nazi, generally don't call them a Nazi, but I will say all great replacement theory people are so fucking non-discernible from Nazis generally that there's really no reason unless you're in an argument where that might be like a misstep to ever describe them otherwise, because they're just like fucking foul. You know what I mean? Best ways to come up with the money is your CEFO can get you tax breaks based on. Yeah, we prefer the term gamer sized individual diversity stuff to make sure you can is fund the your project. Game. Veritas. Oh, by the way, you remember is. I mentioned Elon Musk? Well, this is where Elon Musk signal boosted this by retweeting it simply by saying "Wow," and this got it in front of 5.4 million eyes simply by saying "Wow." Okay, yeah. So the guy, the, the biggest place that people are like finding uh, a lot of motherfuckers to, to to build up these campaigns is on twitter which is run by a guy who's also functionally indiscernible from like a lot of nazi thought leaders in the 1930s who runs the site <laughs> also shout out fucking elon musk having almost no reach and he owns the goddamn platform only 5.3 million there's billions of people on twitter <laughs> that so many people have blocked elon musk that like almost no one sees his tweets he owns the platform he owns it, and like he can only get like 5.4 million likes. That's like, dude, if Ryan Reynolds is just like, holy crap, I just took a shit, like he can get like 15 times that. <laughs> so we're off to the races officially with this tweet. Then you got people like Matt Walsh chiming in and say what you will about Matt Walsh, but this is. I'll say what I will about Matt Walsh. He's a fucking pedophile and a Nazi. <laughs> I think he'd look really interesting if he was on fire from his neck up. <laughs> That's what I'll say about Matt Walsh. Boogie, you fat piece of shit, you fucking, you booger. But I wouldn't be surprised if Boogie is so, f- he's a lazy motherfucker. I know that from watching the fucking documentary about him. He's lazy as fuck. I wouldn't be surprised if he's discovering what's in this in real time in front of our eyes. I think Boogie is getting fed a little entertainment packet that he clicks on and he opens it up and it's got every link and a little script for him to read. And he's just reading through the script talking points and going back and forth and going one to one. He probably just realized that Matt Walsh's Nazi ass is in this motherfucker. I wouldn't be surprised at that. As a matter of fact, that's my, I want that to spread. That is what I want you guys to go out into the world with. I want you to just start saying that him, Asmongold, and like Mudahar just get little packets from the internet and they just read them because they're lazy. I just want that to spread. Just spread it. I don't care if the fuck, it's libel. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I want that to be my fuck. That's my mischief. You guys, you guys remember Fight Club, Project Mischief? You have to go out and do like a little, a little assignment. My assignment is you don't have to go out and like bug it. Don't, don't harass anyone. But just if anyone brings any of this up, just say, oh yeah, that's part of that conspiracy. All those guys get, uh, they all get talking points. <laughs> they all get talking points from James Lindsay. And just say it. Just say it. Just put it out there, random places. <laughs> By Elon Musk. This time to 17.8 million viewers. Hashtag not all fat so people. There's Hashtag now not way more fat. people involved. And Elon Musk says video games need to get rid of the woke BS. Getting lectured with tedious propaganda is not why people play games. 
Now for my opinions. I was Charlie, around. I live like a gate. capitalist every and day. And you guys shit. remember, I was a bit of a notorious fence sitter during that period of time. I hated people being harassed online. I Bro, there's no fucking fence on earth that could support you, Boogie. You're not a fence sitter. You're just too fucking lazy to pick a side. You're 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 stupid and untalented and lucky, and that's how you have a fucking job. That's you're you're not a fucking fence sitter, bro. You're you're just you're an accident. You're, you're a mistake. You can't you don't you don't sit on the fence because you're like uh, uh, unsure of what way to go, and then like once you're fucking inspired and find the right way, you'll start doing something. Everyone knows that's true about you. You're not a kind of person that would fix yourself. You're fucking Boogie 2988. We have already established this is the height. You are literally just waiting to die by your own words of a serious cardiac event. That is the end of you. You are a, a deleterious effect on humankind. There is no value to your continued existence. You don't learn anything. People wave money underneath your fucking nose, and that's the only way that you can get fucking OnlyFans girls or whatever the fuck to suck the smegma off the end of your fucking pole. Like, you are a repugnancy. You're a, you're a, you're a wart. You're an unpopped zit. You are nothing. You can't sit on a fence because there is no part of... There's no version of the world where you make a decision and stick by it because you have a principle to uphold. You can't sit on a fence. There's no fence. It's a field that you don't have the fucking strength to walk across to one side or the other of. You are a fucking weak person. You're a disgrace. You're a disgusting individual. I don't want I don't want you to conflate yourself with people that are better than you and I consider them considerably better and that is actual fence sitters. You are a disgrace to their name. Cuz eventually some of them get off the fucking fence, which you could never do. You don't have the capability of doing it. Motherfucker, like you're going to take a principled stand on anything. Boogie, you buy prostitutes by the fucking 200k receipt level. Like you buy hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of fucking false affection from women just to feel alive. You don't get to pretend like you have some sort of like uh, moral compass inside of you that guides you to one side or the other of something or that you're throwing your hat in the ring is somehow a, a token in, in, in the hat of someone else. You know what I mean? Like, like you're, you're no, you're nothing. That's insane. It's a fluke, an incident of the roll of the dice that you took the most least, uh, you, you took the least amount of advantage of possible that you got to be big enough that people know who you are. And there's this like ongoing incident. You, you should have been a forklift, op like forklift operator or I don't know, like maybe one of the less interesting episodes of like five, 500 pound life. Like you are the living version of the what's going to happen when Bart Simpson's older. I wash myself with a soap on a, a rag on a stick. Like that's your entire existence. That's why people even like you so that you can go on fucking Keemstar and get your fucking titties slapped on the internet and you can get another 10,000 fucking pity bucks. Like you deserve nothing. I can't believe you would compare yourself to someone that is so morally above you as a fence sitter. Like Jesus fucking Christ. Hated seeing people arguing online about this stuff. And I did feel like there was improvement the way that we as content creators and writers and gaming companies could do a better job of calling out corruption in the industry and improving the way that we reported video games. I and sound like Bugs Bunny. It got me utterly cucked by Anita Sarkeesian, chewed up by the left, and spit <sighs> the fuck out. I'm not going to make that mistake again. I like most sane people just like fun video games. I don't care if the protagonists or the supporting characters are short or tall, fat or skinny, black or white, gay or straight. Say purple. Say purple. I, you, I fucking demand that you say I don't care if they're black, white, or purple. You always have to say purple or yellow. Maybe. Purple is the best. I big tits, small tits, negative tits, three dicks, ten dicks. I don't give a shit. I just play video games to have fun. I'm just here to have fun. Please make a fun video game. I also think diversity can be fun. It doesn't have to take away or detract from the video game. Give me cool ca why does he, If he cares about that, then why doesn't he fucking talk about it? Why doesn't he talk about why the game's not fun? Because I'll tell you what you can do with every fucking cutscene, generally, in most games. You can skip them. <laughs> skip the fucking cutscene. Oh, you don't like... That fucking, I don't know, Poison Ivy is like, uh, she's not like a, a fuckable, wearing a leaf bikini, uh, redhead, fucking 10 out of 10 supermodel in the, 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 the Suicide Squad game. And it said it's like a child and like, you, your friends can, but you can't specifically get it up to that. So you're like, uh, 
You can just skip the cutscene, bro. You just fucking ignore it. <laughs> Be like the rest of your illiterate, fucking ill-read, inbreeding, Cheeto-eating fucking fan base of low-tier fucking filth. And just skip the fucking cutscene, you fucking pussy. Talk about the fucking game. You didn't talk about any of the games. You just said, oh, they're fucking connected to it. Kanye finds a Jew. That's like, that's what we just did here. That was, that was the entirety of this. This is just like, we're getting, we're getting ready for some fucking crystal knock shit. This is, this entire thing is Boogie teaching his little fucking audience of, I don't know who the fuck. Dude, I'll tell you what. I get this comment. Everybody gets these kind of comments. You helped me through a bad time in my life. That's why I like your content. That I've gotten that. I'm not even that big. Other people have gotten it probably a bunch. But let me just tell you this right now. If you're the kind of person that Boogie2988's recent content has gotten you through something, there's a small possibility that maybe you shouldn't have gotten through it. So I don't know what the fuck kind of person you are. <laughs> I don't know what that fuck. I don't know. I don't know what part of this fucking, this fucking pay pig uh, fucking uh, clown fucking punching bag fucks content you were watching that you were like, damn, this is, this is a reason to fucking keep on kicking. This is, they, uh, you know what? <laughs> One more day. What in the fuck? Matter of fact, I want you in the comments. Tell me what the fuck, come, tell me what the fuck Boogie got you through and why. <laughs> in recent stuff, it was back in the day with his old fucking like, Numa, no, he wasn't Numa Numa guy. It's Francis character. Is that what it is? Then that, that's fine. But like, dude, Jesus Christ, this shit, this shit, there is no way. <laughs> Tell me what fuck what you got through. I, I want to see, I want to judge. I want to judge if you should have survived it or not. Character creators with crazy shit in it. Give me wild main characters. Give me storylines of things I would never experience in my own I watch life. your content because Miss Panic works way too hard for me to it's not It's got to be done it. well and it's got to be done enough. Fun. When I look at the list of games that Sweet Baby has worked on, I don't find any of the diverse storylines in Spider-Man 2 to be very fun or well done, and we all know what we thought about Suicide Squad, which was just an abomination from the ground up. I personally think that... Yeah, you don't know anything about... Though, let me hear one fucking opinion about any of the other games. I don't know anything about the other games. No one does. And no one's played Suicide Squad. That guy who I saw his fucking Let's Play, he's one of like 15 people that's played that game. Dude, it's, it's, it's I'm a going to use it to make trash. informed decisions moving forward. And as it stands right now, because of the behavior of the people that work at that company, plus Boogie got me to work out and prove myself because on, I didn't want I'm to become Boogie. I'm not inclined to buy anything. That's just an existential thing. You know Does that I mean? make me some white <clears throat> male uh, gamer uh, harasser monster? Then put me on the guillotine list. I'll sign up right first. Dude, I just I just fucking talked that shit. And I lost thirty viewers. Hey, guys, I was kidding. All right. <laughs> I went from 66 to 33 viewers. Hey, you 33. I was kidding, man. Get don't. <laughs> if you're walking to the just calm yourself down. Sit back down, okay? I didn't mean it. You can keep going. I'm ready to go. I've been ready to go since the first game. Okay, they sit back. They sit back. We popped back my misery. You're around for the first game again. You know. It the was tools joke. that you use, right? You've heard it all before. Everything is sexist. Everything is racist. Everything is harassment. Call it all out. Who the fuck said? No one says this anymore. This is so weird, man. You know what? This, you know what's crazy about this is this is me seeing my generation get old, and that's like what fucking gets me. I think that's why I'm so fucking lit about it. Because I think me and Boogie are like right around the same age. No, he's actually like 42, 43, or something like that, isn't he? He's in his 40s. But like, I am seeing my generation get old and start repeating themselves, like. Like over and over again, because like this is a this is a ten year old thing. None of the kids these days that I see like talking about shit on TikTok, and I'm talking about people like fucking early mid twenties, you know, they're not talking about this shit. They don't fucking articulate things like this. It's only people that are my age that are trying to fucking cling to some sort of relevance. And I think a bunch of it is like pay pig shit. I think him, Asmongold, I bet Mudahar. I feel like that Mudahar guy doesn't stand for shit. I, I will say that. I will say that. Clip me. Clip me and send it to it. I think Mudahar is, I think, I think that guy's a fucking rube. I think he's easy to trick. Um, because I've never seen anything about his content where I'm like, oh, he thought it out a lot. <laughs> you know, like this dude did some research. He, he, he figured shit out. Mudahar, I would believe, I would earnestly believe gets fucking, he gets like a little envelope on, handed to him. Someone's like, hey, just, do, just, just check it out. You know, if you agree with it, read it out. I guarantee you. Boogie does. The content is too, si it's too similar. It's not, it, there is, the, it, it hits the things to the point where I'm like, I can tell it's propaganda. I just got to figure out how they put it together. Boogie's too fucking stupid to think this thing up. It, this is a lazy man. He, he stands for nothing. He, this is a guy, you're looking at a guy, you think he fucking, you think he typed 
You think he typed in the fucking web addresses for that? Prove that to me. Prove that that he can fucking type those web web addresses in to look that shit up. This is a man that can't even be bothered to lose one of the fat rolls over his dick. Like just one of them so that he can clean that shit a little bit more. And you're telling me he's doing research? Really? Boogie? Boogie2988 is doing research. Boogie2988, he's looking stuff up. He's coming up with his own ideas. Boogie two nine eight eight. Really, 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 really. He's just getting out there thinking his own thoughts and shit. And it just happens to sound exactly the fucking same. Hit. I guarantee you, if we fucking play these videos side by side for a bunch of these different fucking jackasses that are covering this, you're gonna see the fucking web pages pop up in the same place at the same time in the same fucking order again and again and again and again all the same tweets are going to show up because it's a fuck this is a fucking content pack all right these are things that exist everywhere else in news media everyone knows about this if you are in a part of news media that works it's a press release or a content pack uh there's other different words for it a presser um sometimes if you're in certain kinds of it people will send you something that they want you to cover it and you'll watch other news organizations cover the same thing and it'll look exactly the same because they have the same pictures they have the same references they have the same diet you'll see you'll hear the same quotes in the talking points being brought up which i've heard between him and asmund gold shared he's a stupid person boogie's dumb dude like he's stupid i don't give a fuck that he's rich he lost a bunch of his money buying hookers all right he could have bought a fucking gym membership and fucked whoever he wanted but instead, he fucking took the easy route. He's an easy route taker. He's a fucking junkie for fucking pay pig content. He's a loser in his heart of hearts. Same thing with Asmongold. Asmongold's not a hard worker. He gets on his fucking computer and overgrinds. He just happened to turn on a camera at the right time. And he did exactly what every other fucking World of Warcraft fucking nerd did. Except for he happened to just accidentally get famous. He's a grimy living in his own fucking shit piss and filth individual like he's a fucking nobody he has never fucking he never did go to fucking college i don't even think i don't even know if the motherfucker if, if, if i found out that boogie didn't graduate high school i wouldn't be stunned at all this isn't a guy that you would trust to like put together ikea furniture because he, i don't even think he could actually fucking like know how to hold the goddamn book so that he can see which fucking is up and down with the little figures as they put shit together. Like he couldn't figure out the one, two, three, four of it. And you're going to tell me he's doing research. He's putting together whole videos and shit and like thinking things through. He's doing it right. And it just, ha it just so happened. Him, Asmongold, it just so happens to sound exactly the fucking same shot for shot, guy to guy. They're just in lockstep. Just two strangers who barely know each other, and they're both fucking famous and probably smell like fucking chips and fucking rotten milk. No, fuck that. This lazy fucking piece of shit gets stuff handed to him. He's fucking he's probably stoked about it. I'll tell you what. You know what you need to do? Just just tell him that fucking uh, the actual other side of stuff will get him as many views, and then start doing his homework for him in the other direction as well. And he'll fucking go in the other direction immediately. The person doesn't stand for shit. Fuck this motherfucker. God damn. Shoot everything down. If you don't like it, it's bad, and it must be taken away as long as you're somebody that works at Sweet Baby Incorporated. If you're a consumer like you or me, and you want to have a fun video game... Mooted his research, but his mainline well, of expertise is Don't forget, is if you're a white male tech. gamer, especially an older one like me, it doesn't matter I mean, how I mean, I was honestly surprised by a Sweet Baby how much you video. Support diversity, more comparable it doesn't matter how good of an ally you... I don't know anything about his tech. I've never, I've never seen Mooted's tech stuff. So I don't care. <laughs> Uh, I don't really follow tech news unless it's like a type of technology that I'm interested in. I've only seen Mudahar pop up for gamer shit and like uh, and like hot takes about like drama issues and stuff. And almost every time he's been like, it's been mid. It's been like, okay, this is a guy that listens to other. I, I, I can I can feel it. I can feel it. Charlie, Penguin Zero. That is a guy who thinks his way through things. Whether or not I agree with him, I can feel the way that he talks his way through shit, how he fucking approaches and figures stuff out. With some of the other guys, Mudahar sometimes, some of his stuff, but other times I think that dude just fucking reads Wikipedia or reads Reddits. You know what I mean? And he's just like, oh, that seems good. You know, maybe that's just part of how his thought process works. He just like trusts a guy and he's like, that's like a tech manual level. Like I'll just read from the manual kind of thing. I could maybe give him that. But I've seen him fucking, like, I, 
when I looked at him with any sort of scrutiny, especially on, I can't remember what the fuck we were talking about like a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, 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 the Mama Max thing, and and is like, yeah, this. He was like, I can't believe I work so closely with Mama Max, and I was like, I think I do. I believe that that happened. I think that's. I think you're a guy that's easy to dupe. You know what I mean? You, you just have a rube. You have a rube build to you, it, it, with with all due respect. Like you just, I feel like I could grease you, and it wouldn't be too difficult. I mean, I'm telling you, I can, I could do it. So like, I I've precluded myself, but like, just as a con man, I feel like you're easy to get confident. Like you have a confidence about yourself that's probably really easy to exploit. I bet you. I bet you people have greased him for fucking Bitcoin. Is that a th- is that is that in his past? Has he ever gotten fucking cracked on NFTs or Bitcoin? Wouldn't be surprised. Charlie hasn't even made a video on SBI, which is for the best. I because it's probably he probably looked at it too. He's like, this is a nothing burger. <laughs> Why does anyone watch Asmin Gold? I think it's just misery porn. I've always just been baffled at why Asmund Gold is popular at all. Uh, I think it's just like a World of Warcraft thing. I think some people are also like happy with him because it's like it makes you feel like okay in your own life. Like maybe it'll happen for you kind of deal. You are you are dog shit on the bottom of these people's heels. Don't you ever forget it. If you choose not to buy their shitty games, then you are the enemy. And if you inform other people about what games they've worked on, you might very well find your Steam account gone when you wake up in the morning. That's who you're up against. And I think it should be abundantly clear this is not another harassment campaign. And you, or nobody, should be harassing anybody. We've shown in this video that if you give these people enough time and enough time to speak and a platform to do it on, they'll self-destruct on their own. You don't have to do anything but wait. So I do recommend, if you're somebody who works for their money and has it in their pocket and only wants to spend it on fun video games instead of the games that these people have made, well... They haven't made any video games, though. That's the other thing. He's lying. Either lying or stupid. I guess I would have to say stupid instead of lying because, you know, if you know, maliciousness, is it, is it incompetence <laughs> or is it like ag- active maliciousness? I would I would say with Boogie, even when he tries to be malicious, it's probably still just active incompetence. I bet he throws things. He seems like a guy that like throws like like controllers and shit like he gets mad at his little fucking his little live in inbreeder that chick fucking from the video. And he just like throws like a remote control. Tell me if I'm right. If you know, boogie, tell me if I'm right. Is he a little thrower? They, a big guys that can't get at you. If they get upset, they'll, they'll turn all red. They'll fucking throw like a little bit of plastic or some shit at you. I bet he does that. You got that vibe. You got that vibe boogie. If you watch, I know you'll watch this actually, Boogie you watch everything about him. Boogie turned this fucking recording off and the other guy's editing in the other room. And boogie's just fucking like sweating in the dark, watching people fucking make fun of him. <laughs> shout out but like yeah they didn't make the game the sweet baby and people don't make the game they consult on it like buildings have people that are consultants they're, they're not like the masons the, they, the, the building could exist without the consultants very often it does you know what i mean or like you can consult from multiple different people uh this just happened to be one where like the lady was like weird once i guess i don't know like 30 second clip you could ask her you had like a giant platform but like that dude boogie lazy stupid not going to fucking like reach out to try to like talk to the lady like hey what do you got going on with the sweet baby ink like what the fuck's up with that why don't you talk to me like that why why don't you talk to me about what's what's going on i heard some shit about you can i get your side of the story fuck no fuck no he's not gonna fucking talk to her he's gonna accept the clip that somebody sent him in the little fucking info packet and then he's just gonna fucking piss and shit it all over his youtube page like the rest of his fucking content yeah global fucking chunk ass grifter I think that's probably the right thing to do as well, even though they'll probably still call that harassment. At the end of the day, I set the last one out, and uh, I felt like I was on the wrong Gamer side. Gamergate Two is official. And, uh, it certainly didn't serve me well. I didn't even read that like that. I thought it was official. So gamers, uh, I, I've been granted a do-over here. I don't know why Homeland Security has decided that they are going to give me a chance to right this particular ship, but I'm going to take it, and I'm going to make sure that I'm on the right side of fun video games and fun, well-written diversity, nowhere else. You know how I'm going to be on the side of fun, well written diversity? I will be on the side of fascists. <laughs> the way I found the best way to make fun games is to definitely by uh, aligning myself with um, literal neo-Nazis and people that harass trans, uh, trans youth to suicide. <laughs> One guy, his entire claim to fame is just trying to grift in ways that people didn't know so that he could, like, say the system's flawed. Like, I managed to lie to somebody in a way that they couldn't detect. 
which means nothing about how fucking vile and slimy I am. It's more about how uh, unable they are to detect animals like me. <laughs> fucking piece of shit, dude. Like and like subscribe. And like, like, and like, subscribe. Like, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.